Item number SCP-993 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Any broadcasts of SCP-993 are to be intercepted as detailed in Protocol Upsilon Beta-3 and blocked from public viewing. All intercepted broadcasts are to be recorded and stored for future viewing. Any subjects used to view SCP-993 must be under the age of 10 and are to be dosed with a Class A amnesiac after they have described the episode. Viewing of SCP-993 must be authorized by three Level 4 personnel. SCP-993 is a children's television program entitled Bobble the Clown, which first began airing in 19. SCP-993 seems to have been made in the style of an educational cartoon with the primary plot of most episodes being the titular character Bobble the Clown, learning a new skill or activity. The program appears to have no supporting cast, and the setting of the program often changes between episodes. SCP-993's anomalous properties become obvious when the program is viewed. Anyone watching age 10 years or older will immediately fall unconscious when the program begins, and will remain incapacitated until the end of the program later reporting a stabbing headache immediately before blacking out. Children under the age of 10 viewing SCP-993 later report that it teaches and advocates activities such as cannibalism, murder, torture. These activities appear to become ingrained in the subject's mind. Repeated exposure to SCP-993 can result in permanent psychotic and schizophrenic symptoms. Episodes of SCP-993 are regularly broadcast from a currently unknown source, but since 2000, all broadcasts have been successfully intercepted using Protocol Upsilon Beta-3 and blocked from public viewing. Episode Title Contents Bobble's Kitchen Surprise Setting of Episode is a Stereotypical Small American Town In the episode, Bobble the Clown appears to kidnap one of the town's citizens and takes him to his home. Once there, Bobble the Clown informs the viewer on how to prepare human flesh for consumption, then proceeds to skin, gut, and cook the citizen. Bobble in the Big City Setting of episode is a large American city, possibly New York. In the episode, Bobble the Clown instructs viewers on methods of lighting fires undetected, using resources such as mosquito coils. At the end of the episode, Bobble the Clown sets fire to a large building and leaves. The picture stays in the burning building for a further three minutes before the episode ends. Screams are audible during this time. Bobble Sneaky Saturday Setting an episode appears to be London, as the Elizabeth Tower housing Big Ben is visible. In the episode, Bobble the Clown silently stalks a woman for most of the episode. When she arrives at her home, Bobble the Clown attacks and kills her with a large butcher knife. At the end of the episode, Bobble the Clown details methods of remaining unseen in crowded places. Bobble gets the truth. Setting of episode appears to be a prisoner of war camp. In the episode, Bobble the Clown tortures a captured soldier, repeatedly asking him nonsensical questions. The soldier eventually appears to die of his wounds. Bobble the Clown then details to the viewer how to inflict painful but non-lethal injuries. Bobble hates you. Setting an episode appears to be a blank room. Bobble the Clown sits on a chair in the room staring angrily at the viewer for the full 30 minutes of the episode. You. 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 Setting of the episode appears to be Site Video Archive, where recordings of SCP-993 are stored. In the episode, Bobble the Clown angrily details methods of breaching containment for several SCPs. Bobble then detailed methods to murder researchers involved in its containment, showing detailed knowledge of their daily routines and habits. Notably, what appears to be an animated version of Dr. walks past Bobble halfway through the episode. A clock on the wall shows the time as PM. Dr. confirms that he was walking past SCP-993's archive at the time. Behind the Scenes Ah, hello there. No, don't get up. Put down the gun, though. It won't do anything. 
I'm not real. How could you shoot me? There we go. See? Isn't that much nicer? All friends? Face that window, please. Oh, and smile. There. That's good. You look surprised, Doctor. You've been on a binge of me, haven't you? I like your style. You fall down, and you just get right back up. Shame, though. That's what let me in. Nice couch. Don't get up. I'll make myself at home. What are you talking about, Doctor? Oh, no. I've not come here as some sort of vengeful retribution. I really don't mind you people watching me, although I do wish you'd share them. You're very selfish, taking me away from the children like that, you know? I admit, I did lose my temper for a bit back there, didn't I? Don't worry. I've come to terms with my new audience. You do let me at children quite often. Some people would call you monsters. Not me. I don't judge. I'm fair. <laughs> what are you writing? I'm very sorry, Doctor, but this isn't an interview. I'd put it in the trash. There we go. Everything goes in the trash eventually. You trash your precious interview. The children trash your little minds, and even I had to trash some of my other gimmicks. Oh yes, I've been making little savages for quite a while now, Doctor. Put down the gun. I think I started off small. The idea of fire some stupid caveman got into their skulls. Children didn't really have time for me back then, so I moved on. The skinwalker stick, though, that was a good idea. Children whispered about me in the dark. Adults even painted me. I hardly had to do anything at all. But then you had to get clever, didn't you? Suddenly, all those superstitions started to float away and I had no children to help. No parents to, well, you'll find out soon enough. And yet, there was one little form that I had left. One fun-loving character that could still reach inside those kids' heads and twist. I'm talking, of course, about Bobble the Clown. Oh, don't look so glum. Smile! You're on television! As of... 2000 and... It appears SCP-993 has ceased broadcasting. As of... 2000 and... SCP-993 has resumed its normal broadcasting. Reclassification to Euclid is being considered. Episode Title Contents Bobble's Back Setting of episode appears to be Dr. B***'s office. Bobble appears in the room and Dr. B registers shock, then faces the viewer and smiles. Bobble and Dr. B then appears to converse for 15 minutes, although no dialogue is audible. Fifteen minutes in, Dr. B raises a pistol and fires upon Bobble to no effect. Bobble then systematically dismembers and removes facial extremities from Dr. B using a large butcher's knife. Signs of movement are visible from Dr. B for three minutes, after which the credits roll. Alarmingly, Dr. B disappeared without a trace a day before the episode broadcasted. BobbleCon 2018 Item Number SCP-993 Object Class Uncontained So, said Raj, driving a pick into the corpse's back, what was your favorite episode? Has to be 78, replied Lindsay, eyes far off in the realm of nostalgia. I used to watch that one every morning before school. Bobble's Hunting Lodge. Good choice. BobbleCon 2018 had been difficult to organize. So much of the fandom was in prison or otherwise indisposed, but they'd finally managed to snag a venue and a good chunk of attendance. The trouble was, Rod reflected as he pulled the pick out of the body. The locals didn't seem to care much for Bobble at all. There was no end to the Bobble haters, from what Rod had seen. There were all sorts of organizations keen to keep him locked up or even, God forbid, kill him. Well. He said after a minute, stuffing the pick back into his backpack. I think Deputy Dollop here got the point. We should be able to go on without any more interruptions. He began walking back towards the village's church, which the attendants had covered with homemade bobble banners and other wonderful memorabilia. It really wasn't fair how that cop had wanted them out. This village had shit in terms of viable convention venues. If they didn't set up in the church, where would they set up? Deputy Dollop laughed Lindsay, catching up to him. Episode 9004, right? 
Well spotted, grinned Raj, wagging a fender. Preston was right. You really do know your stuff. Like I said, every morning, you don't forget a show like Bobbles. That you do not, said Raj, opening the doors to the church. The convention-goers turned from the pews, eagerly awaiting news about the deputy outside. Their faces were painted white and their hair dyed orange, just like Bobble. It was a bit of fun Lindsay had come up with when they first met up. Raj and Lindsay had done the same themselves. He'd never done cosplay before, but he had to admit it was pretty amusing. Well, said Princeton, the only one of them in a full Bobble outfit from the altar. His eyes were wide with anticipation. Raj reached into his bag and pulled out the pick, blood still dripping from his edge. The show goes on, he cheered, and BobbleCon cheered with him. Raj had first met Bobble when he was six, maybe? Definitely at least six. He'd been sitting in the kitchen, eating a bowl of cereal, when he heard a crashing sound from the living room. He'd run out to check what it was, and what did he find but his mother, having fallen on the floor unconscious? It looked for all the world like she'd just fallen asleep while doing the ironing. Raj, worried, had run to the phone, ready to call 911 when… Hey there, kids! Guess who? Raj looked up to see a face on the television, a cheerful-looking cartoon clown, with pale skin and curly orange hair. There was a kindness in his eyes. You could tell that straight away. This was a person who wanted the best for you. Maybe… maybe it would be best not to call 911. She'd only fainted, after all, and Raj was pretty curious about this new show. He didn't remember ever seeing it before. Raj went and sat on the couch, watching the television with rapt attention. The clown on the screen grinned, as if he could see straight into Raj's living room. That's right, it's your old pal, Bobble the Clown! It was like nothing Raj had ever seen. He'd caught glimpses of violent movies and stuff when he snuck downstairs after bed, but never more than snippets. Blood and guts, screaming cries, he'd never realized how fun they could be. Bobble made them that way, of course. The show wouldn't work without him, Raj could tell that even way back then. Thirty minutes flew by like nothing, and by the end Raj wanted nothing more than for his new friend to stick around. Bobble seemed to share the feeling, weeping exaggerately on the screen, hands over his eyes. Oh, boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! Alas, children, that's all for the day! Please, please, if you have any decency in your hearts." Suddenly he took his hands away, and those kind, kind eyes were back. Kind gray eyes, like the edge of a knife, he grinned at Raj. Tune in next time, honk honk, honk honk. The television snapped back to static, and soon enough the morning news resumed playing. His mother stirred on the floor, slowly getting up. Raj, she slurred, what happened? Raj didn't reply. He was too excited, his face having broken out into a grin just like Bobble's. His new friend would be on television again just the next day. He'd never been happier in his life. I first started watching Bobble when I was nine, said Preston into the microphone taped to the altar, the rest of the attendants listening reverently from the pews. My parents were having a divorce at the time, and I was honestly having a hard time of it. Bobble gave me something to look forward to every morning, and, in this fandom, I honestly think this fandom saved my life. I love you guys so much. A wave of polite clapping a wave of polite clapping and cheering went through the pews. Lindsay, standing behind Preston, put a reassuring hand on his shoulder. We bobbleheads have to stick together, she said, smiling warmly. Episode 399. Preston recognized the quote, tears in his eyes. Yeah, episode 399. Special containment procedures. As SCP-993 is no longer under containment, all efforts are to focus on tracking down and halting all SCP-993 broadcasts. Outgoing broadcasts are to be intercepted through the updated version of Procedure Upsilon Beta-3. Operated by learning computers Tau-4, Amon, and Epsilon-9, Josiah. Physical searches of broadcast locations are to be handled by Mobile Task Forces Zeta-2, Lumberjacks, Ada-10, Sino evil and Mu-9, Toy Breakers. Individuals identifying as part of the group BobbleCon or individuals over the age of 10 who are immune to SCP-993's effects are to be treated as hostile and engaged with appropriate force. Class C amnestics are to be administered to any individual suspected to have been exposed to SCP-993's cognitohazardous effects.
All involved MTF units are to be supplied with scramble-type goggles in order to prevent them from viewing SCP-993 and being rendered unconscious. All security on SCP objects mentioned in prior SCP-993 broadcasts is to be intensified severely. One day, Bobble the Clown had stopped airing. There had been no warning, no prophecy from Bobble to let his viewers know. One day, Bobble came to visit, and the next he didn't. Raj wept for weeks. He was inconsolable. He'd done so much for Bobble. The cats that had disappeared in the neighborhood were proof of that. And he just left him. He hadn't even said goodbye. When he thought back on it, after the first few weeks, he realized that Bobble wouldn't have left his fans by choice. There was nobody Bobble loved more in the world than his fans. He hadn't left. Someone had taken him. Stolen him. Raj ran away from home not long after that. If Bobble was missing, then it was up to his fans to find him. Over the years, through internet cafes and meetups, Raj grew to meet other Bobbleheads on the same quest. They'd scour every bit of information even slightly related to Bobble, hoping to release their best friend from his change. But in the end, there weren't many of them. Even with guns and knives, you could only overpower so many to get the information you needed. All they managed to scrounge up, for all their efforts, were three letters. SCP. Raj assumed they were the ones who stole Bobble, but he couldn't even be sure of that. They lost hope until Lindsay had contacted them, and let them know of the treasure she had. We're all waiting, Lindsay, laughed Raj, trying to appear casual, but there was a pit in his stomach. What if it didn't work? What if Lindsay was wrong? Be patient, Raj, grinned Lindsay. Raj could almost see the excitement trickling out of her skin like sweat, or maybe pus. The two of them turned as they heard a door open. Preston and another bobblehead wheeled in an old television and VCR player from the church's recreation room. The attendants rushed to gather around as Lindsay approached it. Everyone keep it together, chuckled Lindsay, reaching into her backpack. It's not going anywhere. She pulled out a tape. On it was written in marker, Bob Clown Episode 21. The tape! The convention cheered as one, so high-pitched it was like a scream. The tape! The tape. Courtesy of Westhead News. Praise Bobble and praise the tree, laughed Lindsay, shoving the tape into the player. Raj didn't know what the hell the tree was, but he didn't really care at this point. His favorite show was coming back on. The screen turned on. For a few horrible seconds, it showed some cartoon about an elephant, and Raj thought it was over, but then it changed. The picture was of a blank, empty room, white and sterile with only a chair in the center. A prison cell, surely. There was a man sat in the chair, and they all recognized him. They all knew him. How could they ever have forgotten that face? The show zoomed in, and soon enough Bobble the Clown's face filled the screen. A deep frown was on his face. His kind, gray eyes flicked from left to right, taking in everyone in the church. His frown became a smirk, and then a wide, rictus grin. He laughed a jolly screeching laugh that shook the stained windows of the church in their frames, before jumping out of his chair and planting a sloppy kiss on the camera. Hey there, kids! He said. Guess who? On February 12, 2018, at 2107 hours, the contents of all tapes previously containing recordings of SCP-993 suddenly changed to a new episode. Bobble loves his fans. Episode is framed as Bobble accepting a trophy in a large auditorium for his contributions to the arts, education, and the continuation of human nature. After giving an acceptance speech that goes on for 50 minutes, a full transcript of which is available in Supplementary Document XXX-1, Bobble declares that in celebration of his award, he will be putting his show back on the air. To conclude his speech, he bids his audience, consisting of animated versions of celebrities, unidentified children and Foundation personnel to commit mass suicide, a request they appear to happily comply with. Then he leaves the stage through a wooden door at the back. Following this event, the Foundation received reports that SCP-993 have resumed broadcasting from approximately locations. Although interception of these broadcasts is ongoing as dictated by Protocol Upsilon Beta-3. New broadcasting locations appear to be arising as fast as others are being blocked. It is at this point undeniable that SCP-993 
has completely breached containment. 